Hello and welcome back to my channel and welcome to my 100 year old Pleasant View save where today we're looking at university gameplay. Uh, I recently saw a post on Twitter that said the university expansion pack is the worst in every Sims game and I think yeah they're probably <laughs> not wrong there. Um, playing university in The Sims 4 made me quit my legacy three generations in and the first time I played university with The Sims 2 I'm pretty sure uh, millennia passed, stars grew cold and my Sims were still just sophomores. Uh, but today I play the university with every rotation, uh, and I have done for years at this point. I think I've cracked it, I've made university fun for me, and I want to share the love. So we're going to go in today, I'm going to take you through my current university household over here at Landgrab House. And uh, yeah, we get to meet the Sims and I'll tell you what I do to make university fun and interesting. So this is my current university batch of students. They all come fresh from Pleasant View. They've only just started. Um, you can see them being placed in my rotation video, setting up for my new rotation. And this is how they're doing at the moment. So I'm gonna let them play out in the background as I talk. And hopefully they don't get into too much trouble as we go. Uh, so I first played university through with Alexander Goth and Bo Broke with not many mods and using all the EA defaults. So not very modern at all. It took a very long time and I nearly lost my mind. Uh, but it did leave me with a very strong bond with those two sims, so it wasn't all bad. But it did put me off university completely for a long time. I just thought it was too long, it was too much like hard work. So what made me go back? Mods. Mods made me go back. Mods are always the answer. Uh, everything I mention uh, in this video, I'll link uh, down below in the description. It will be there, and we'll go through some of the things I used. Uh, first things first, EA decided that university should last for a complete ice age, uh, which is just, I think it's a poor choice. The mod that made me want to use university again was uh, Semester Changes by Sijon, uh, which shortens all the semesters to two days each. So you can see for this crew, they've only just arrived and it's already 43 hours till their final exam for their freshman year. They don't have long and that's pretty great. It brings my rotation just about in line with my Pleasant View as well. Uh, and so it makes things like Join the Secret Society a bit trickier. I've never actually pursued that particularly, uh, but there's still plenty of time for like skilling, socialising, uh, and doing assignments as well. Uh, to go with it, I also use Cy John's revised majors, which changes which careers go with uh, which degrees, I think. And it also reduces the skills needed for each semester, just so it's you haven't got so much time, uh, so you can get on with what you can do. Uh, it's just a nice mod that works in the background, and I don't have to think about it too much. So now that I had the shorter semesters and some tweaked majors, what I next decided to do was think about some rules and ways to make the game interesting for me personally. First rule is admittance. There are no student loans in my game. Everyone attends for free because you can dream uh, that a world is education isn't a lifelong problem. It's a nice, a nice game to play. That's what I like to imagine. Um, my main world's also pretty cash poor. They don't have a lot of money because of mods controlling their salaries and uh, finances in general, their bills. Uh, so they don't need an extra loan on top when they might want to get one for their house. Again, it would be nice to have that. <laughs> uh, the downside is every student has to work for themselves to get through, so graduating with the highest degrees isn't guaranteed. Um, I, a few students over the years have not been able to make up enough skill points over the time. They've dropped out. Um, uh, but the benefit of playing each of these sims from birth, so all of these I've played from when they first were born in the game, uh, is I, I know most of them had the opportunity to learn just about enough. <laughs> So a couple of them, if I go through here. So for instance, uh, Heidi Newson over here hasn't ever done a body skill points, but she's got enough in mechanical and in cleaning uh, to get herself started so she can get going. I probably wouldn't recommend my methods if you got like a large cohort like this, if you're kind of starting with a brand new uh, college set, if you're creating them yourselves, just because I think the skills might get a bit crazy, but they already have a lot of skills coming into university, so that's quite nice and easy for me. Uh, second rule is that nobody can pick a major until they're a sophomore. So their freshman year, they always do the undeclared major. Everyone does the same, the study of indecision. So yeah, every freshman completes the undecided year together first. I like to think of it sort of like a foundation course. Uh, everyone needs some basic skill points in mechanical body and cleaning. Um, the basic life essentials, I suppose, before they can do something more fun and more of what they want to do. It also means I get one semester of them all on the same schedule. I think they've all arrived too late to go to college today or go to class today. But that's very helpful that they're all now going to be here till the morning. The third rule I have is that every student will decide their own major. 
Uh, it doesn't matter if it conflicts with their lifetime once, or well, like what I might have thought they would do, uh, but I will choose a degree uh, based on the wants they roll. So, for example, Heidi has rolled a want to be uh, to declare the art major. I think she wants to be a game designer. So I think that works. Uh, but doesn't always. Sometimes they have completely random decisions. But I honour that. And as soon as they become sophomores, they can choose that major, declare it, and start doing those classes. Uh, if they take a little bit while, if they take a while longer to decide, that's absolutely fine. Um, and if they don't decide at all, they will automatically be enrolled in the philosophy degree, thanks to this, the way the game works. It has those settings, and I've had quite a few philosophers over my rotations. Uh, do you have any rules you've used for university? Uh, do your students take out loans, for example? Uh, let me know in the comments. I love hearing how other people play. Uh, where are you off to? Ah, oh, a random congratulations. So the first thing I do when I move students in is to give them their own room assignment and give them a makeover. And I have done this off camera, I did this as part of setting up for rotation, and then I thought I would do this video once I started playing with them, so I haven't played for very long. Uh, I tend to use the order their portraits are in and then go clockwise. So you'll see at the top we have Casey, he's in this room, next one's Heidi, she's in the next room, and so on around the room just to make it easier to find out where they're supposed to be sleeping. <laughs> That's just a nice way that I've uh, developed so that I'm not desperately searching for their room. Although sometimes I do mess it up. I also give them a makeover. I let them make their own decisions about their fashion, how they want to look, the clothes they wear. I'll give them one set of clothes for free using the Gussy Up mod, which I'll link below. Uh, anything else, if they were all the want to buy more clothes, like Heidi has, um, they'd have to go to uh, the student union to buy those. So we should meet them, all these many, many sims we have here. Uh, the first one on the list is Casey Broke. We have lots of Brokes in this rotation. The Broke family has spread out massively. Uh, so Casey, if I show you his family tree. He is descended from Dustin Broke. So way back at the beginning, we had Dustin. This is Dustin's long family tree. Casey is his eldest son, Cameron's second child, Casey. Aaliyah is already graduated. And his two younger siblings are Brianna and Delilah. They're still back in Pleasant View. So next we have Heidi Newson. She's over here enjoying the bubble blower uh, with uh, Robin. So she is a Newson. And if we go over here, what I did with the Newsons in this game, or in my game, is I had uh, Ginger marry Dante uh, Lothario as he was. Uh, he is Nina Caliente's second child, not actually Don's son, he just had the name. That's why he took the Newson surname, because he wasn't really a Lothario. Um, so Ginger and Dante married, and they adopted and looked after uh, Ginger's younger siblings. So Gavin, Georgia, Gabriella, Garrett, and Gallagher. And then they had their own children. Ginger was a family sim. She wanted lots and lots of kids herself, and she had six of her own. Many, many nuisance in my pleasant view. And um, Heidi is the second youngest. Harvey will be coming in the next rotation to college. So they've all now left Pleasant View. They've all now grown up a little bit, at least. Uh, but Heidi is now the most recent one in college. And as you can see, the other nuisance have been keeping up the tradition of having many children <laughs> and many babies at the moment. It's been a big baby season in Pleasant View. So it's nice to come to college and escape uh, baby fever in the main town. Uh, we, oh, so she is a uh, pleasure sim. Her lifetime want is to become a game designer. And she's already rolled the want to declare the art major. So as soon as she's a sophomore, we will add that for her. Uh, next sim is Martin Burb. Uh, Martin's one of the Burbs, but he has a kind of interesting story, actually. Let me find his family tree. So he is uh, descended from the Burbs, so from John and Jennifer Burb, their son Adam. He's Adam's son. Uh, he's also descended from uh, Angela uh, Angela Pleasant, as she is, and Dustin Broke. Uh, that's Lila, their child. Uh, but he isn't actually biologically either of their, of their child. You can probably tell from his colouring. So if we look at his family tree directly, uh, it is pretty scattered. He's all kind of got lots of broken connections, broken links, because Lila and uh, Adam were married... They then divorced, uh, but not before adopting Martin. So they had two children themselves, which is Melissa and uh, Dylan. And then to try and save the relationship, I guess, they adopted a child. Lila wanted another one. Adam wasn't so sure, but not so long after that, they split up. Lila left the family, um, leaving Martin, Dylan and Melissa, actually, 
uh, to go and live with Don Lothario. It was a scoundrel at the time. Uh, and so Martin's kind of become a middle child because Adam remarried. He had three more of his own kids, three more kids with his new wife. And because Martin's the middle one, he's adopted. He's been very much sort of out of step with the rest of his family for a long time. Though he is very close to his older brother, Dylan. Yeah, he's a knowledge sim. He wants to kind of strike it on his own, become a doctor, kind of make his own life uh, away from the burbs as best he can, or from his parents anyway. Uh, so yeah, I'm glad Martin's now here in college and about to move on with his life. We then have two of the broke twins. Oh, they're doing it again. <laughs> we have Nicole and Selena. They are uh, broke twins. They were in my broke... Uh, overview video that I did quite recently or a couple weeks ago um, they are now in college so if we just review them they're descended from Bo Broke uh, Molly is their daughter his daughter and then uh, Nicole and Selena are their elder twin uh, children who are now in college together uh, Selena is a romance sim she wants to be a celebrity chef and her family sim sister <laughs> not a romance sim is busy making out with Casey uh, and wants to have, I think, six grandchildren. Oh no, become education minister. Uh, fantastic. But she has not yet rolled her want for um, her major, so we'll see what she rolls up, if anything, to support that. Oh, I was going to go sleep on the sofa. I did have a bit of a recording glitch, so I had to. I lost my previous descriptions of the family, um, so now they're all very tired. Uh, we then have Robin, who has been on the bubble blower all day, as you can see from her knees. We've actually. Can we get some food, Robin, before you pass out? Probably Heidi as well. We need the bathroom. So just, just go and do that and I can carry on talking. See it, Robin is Robin Jeffress, but she's also really a broke. She descended from Bo Broke. Uh, one of his, well, she's the youngest of his nine children uh, and now many grandchildren. <laughs> uh, she was a surprise one, actually. I didn't think um, her mother Rose would be able to have another kid at that point, but she did. It was Robin. Um, and unfortunately, they both passed away when Robin was a teenager. So she spent some time living in the flop house by herself, uh, which has kind of made her a bit tough, a bit independent. But she is a popularity sim, ultimately. Uh, so she wants to make friends with everybody. It's already there in her wants. And she, her lifetime want is to become the mayor. So the best friend of everybody, I guess. Uh, no wants of her degree yet, but she will be able to get a full um, pass on her freshman year. So that should be pretty good for her. Then the last sim among all the bro uh, Brokes and Burbs is Walter Goth, who is the second oldest child of Bella Goth, the second Bella Goth uh, that is in my pleasant view. Show his family tree. So yeah, descended from Alexander, we have Bella, and then uh, Walter is the second child after Roger, who's already back in town. Uh, so if we look at Bella there directly. Uh, Roger did have a baby this rotation. That's Roland, which is the fifth generation now with Bella Goth still being alive. We have a full goth family tree. And what is the next one? Uh, he's also a family sim, so he wants to have his own family, but he has no attraction to any of the girls. <laughs> oh, except for oh, except for Nicole. Oh, sadly, it could never be. Um, so he's going to have to cast a bit of a wider net to find a wife. Uh, but he wants to have six grandchildren, which his, I think, uh, grandfather's achieved. So uh, we'll see how that goes. He's... Uh, already did roll the want to declare the history major, so as soon as he's a sophomore, we'll be able to lock that in for him. So we'll get everyone to look after their needs a bit and get into bed, uh, and I'll talk about the rest of the mods I use. Okay, so that's the current batch of kids all about to go to bed <laughs> for the night. Uh, there's a couple of other things I do do for my students. Um, I use the university mechanics to decide when they get their secondary aspiration. I've gone back and forth on this a bit. Uh, firstly, I uh, gave everyone their secondary aspiration when they were adults, when they left university. But at the moment I'm doing it in college, I think it's quite interesting to think of them maturing a bit, developing and seeing how this impacts their relationships and wants while they're in university. Um, they'll get other perks after each semester. So they'll get their want slots and want locks by going through every year. But after junior year, they don't get anything. So I like to use a calculator at that point to set up their lifetime, oh sorry, secondary aspiration uh, based on a calculator. Uh, that's also the first time they get any aspiration rewards. I don't give those out until they're actually adults. Uh, so you can see for Walter, he's already accumulated six points, but hasn't spent any. He'll get to have his secondary aspiration, but the rest of the points I'll use when he moves back to Pleasant View as an adult, just to kind of symbolize, you know, you've graduated, you've now got new skills, new abilities. I, I think that's how it works. <laughs> 
Uh, other ways to make university bearable, they've been using it all day, is the bubble blower. <laughs> I have this in every university lot. I think it's pretty fun. Uh, writing term papers, especially with the um, shorter uh, semesters, can become a bit of a grind. They'll have a lot of work to do uh, to graduate or to get there to pass their years. Um, so having the bubble blower there, having the bubble blower there, it's helpful for fun, uh, melting stress, and just sort of uh, getting them to socialise. So I like to have that. I do also have, as always, I have ACR active on the lots. Uh, Casey and uh, Nicole, I think, were woohooing in the photo booth earlier. I also put a photo booth on every university lot that I use. Some of them to woohoo. I like them to have the single beds to actually sleep in, but there's got to be a woohoo location. The photo booth is fun. And then I can take a picture as well of any university couples to take back home with them. I also do have, so next to the uh, ACR here, I have the university adjuster. This does let you be a little bit cheaty with your university if you want to be, and if that makes things fun for you, you should absolutely do it. I did use this previously before I became a bit more relaxed about people graduating. You can do lots with this. You can set their semester, their GPA, their, kind of their current grade. Um, you can change their uh, hours until their next exam and also give them their phones and things through here if you want to. And that would also let you do the secret society if you are a bit pressed for time. So I don't always use it, but it's helpful to have it there if you need to, uh, again, to make things fun. Um, I also use No Dormy Protect by Pescado, the classic. Uh, that stops the, the dormies. So we have two in this hall uh, that are living over here. It stops them from just hiding in their room because their needs will decay. Um, so ideally they're going to come out, they're going to socialise. Maybe they'll die if they use the exercise machine too much, but at least they will be out and about and so could become sort of social uh, with your existing sims. Because often if I don't get people to pair up, uh, they're going to have to get with um, people in their university if they're not going to go back and find someone. And as you can see, everyone has class in one hour. This is their synced up schedule in action. And so they now should all take themselves off to university to do some studying. Uh, I'm considering putting the uh, Education is Good mod also by Sajon into my game. Uh, it limits how far Sims can go in their careers based on their education level. However, because I do send everyone to university and life is pretty tough for my Sims anyway because their wages are halved and their bills are high and there's you know, not much money going around. I've never really gone for it, but it is a good option if you want to make university a bit more meaningful in your game as well. Um, I've also experimented with moving Sims to the flop house for sort of like... Um, for a season or rotation after university, sort of like a master's degree, uh, to focus on their career. I did it with a sim last rotation doing the medical career. It was pretty fun because it's a bit like the university halls because there's a, a canteen person on the, the flop house lot that will uh, cook meals for them. They get a little room, a bit more independence, but they're still sort of just focusing on career. So I might do that again with anyone that wants to go into a more academic focused career if I need to. Uh, beyond mod, the main thing I do to enjoy university is to play it. Um, it's become part of my rotation. I can think of it as a bit of a break from my normal gameplay. Oh, Robin, you're late. You're going to miss it. Run. Uh, it's a break from my normal gameplay, from sort of family drama, relationship drama, um, outside of university. Within it, it's more, it's its own special thing. It's like, same as you play for ages, coming to university, making their own connections, their own relationships. I would never have paired Casey and Nicole, but they've done that for themselves already. <laughs> they've already paired off. Uh, and so I like that. I like the Sims to kind of lead the way. Um, and just sort of have those experiences that I wouldn't think to give them because there's lots of them I can't micromanage. Um, it doesn't really support that particularly. Oh, now they're all going to meet a million professors. Bear with this. <laughs> um, so yeah, they can all hang out. They can make different connections, make lifelong friends. Um, they can party together. They can have a good time. They can stress. It's just a fun thing to, to have and let the game sort of run in its own way. I do split my rotation into two. I will normally play freshman and sophomore year. If not together completely, then um, I'll play up to sophomore year before I take a break. And then I will go back to main Pleasant View for a while. And I normally aim to have... Um, and I normally aim to have... Oh, there we go. No door to protect. He's just wet himself. In the front garden. There's a toilet over here. What is your name? Gabe. Gabe Galthier, there is a toilet over here. There's two of them. My goodness. Uh, so yeah, I'll always aim to have the university be the last thing I play as well in a rotation. So I'll end by playing the last two uh, semesters 
for the final PlayStation because uh, I'm set up for setting up for the new rotation. I've just played with them. They're back in the family bin when they're done, and then I can move them in. I kind of have their stories fresh in my mind, so I know who's moving where when I start up again. So I find that pretty easy to manage. Uh, so yeah, play university regularly, get to know it. I should probably give Sims 4 University another chance, actually, um, based on what I've just said now. Uh, just kind of playing it makes it better and modding it as well. Lots and lots of mods make everything better. Oh, are we starving? Hungry. Come and get some fresh canteen chilli. She's on it. Uh, so yeah, I just like how it makes lets my sims cross over and meet in ways they don't during childhood and teen years. Um, I have a mod in Pleasant View that means people that go to private school don't meet people that go to public school. So that's, you know, Walter, for example, hasn't met any of these sims before. He's just seeing them for the first time. Uh, he's particularly impressed, except with Martin. Uh, so they can either, you know, find their true love in university or make lifelong enemies and spend the rest of their lives kicking over each other's bins. I just find that pretty fun. I find that pretty, pretty good. Uh, and it lets the chaos really shine and what the Sims want to do, they do it and there's no stopping them. Uh, but definitely, whatever you do, mod it to make it shorter because nobody needs to spend four real-time years in pretend university. Uh, so I hope this has been helpful um, and at least enjoyable and I hope it gives you some ideas for your university gameplay or just uh, a good look into mine uh, and one day maybe I'll even learn to love University of the Sims 4 maybe I should give it another try thank you so much for watching I hope this has been interesting if you've enjoyed it please do subscribe we just hit a thousand subscribers and that's been absolutely amazing thank you so much for that um, I'm loving making these videos um, life's been a bit hectic at the moment but this is so much fun to, to come back and do uh, and share the sims with everyone so i hope to see you next time uh they're back at it again thank you so much for watching bye